Good afternoon, uh, folks, and thanks for attending this press conference. Uh, to my right, you will be uh, witnessing the images and video of a horrific act that took place yesterday at the TD Bank at 2555 St. Clair Avenue West, shortly after 12.20 p.m. What had occurred is that uh, two male blacks, both in their early 20s, one is described as wearing a black hooded sweat top with a number eight over the left breast with a, a Chicago White Sox ball cap and faded blue jeans. This individual is armed with a silver semi-automatic handgun. His partner in crime, described as a male black, same age, early 20s, wearing a uh, hooded sweat top, some type of baseball cap underneath along with a quilted down type North Face jacket or uh, vest and faded blue jeans. These two individuals entered the bank. The bank had security personnel in the bank, at which time the first male with the number eight brandished the handgun immediately and demanded that the customers and employees get to the ground. The second individual vaulted the counter, uh, looking for the cash, making demands for the cash. A customer, as you'll see in the bank, uh, did not move to the ground quickly. And when the second male who vaulted the counter with a quilt vest vaulted, revaulted over the counter again, he was tackled by the customer, at which time a struggle ensued and the male with the handgun attempted to shoot the victim and in so struck a 22-year-old female bank employee in the thigh. The struggle continued, at which point in time the two suspects ran from the bank. They stole the victim's iPhone. The victim chased the suspects from the bank into the parking lot. This is the same victim that uh, had the one suspect in a headlock. Once in the parking lot, a further altercation, altercation took place near the getaway vehicle, at which time the 54-year-old male victim was shot in the abdomen, and the two suspects entered a stolen 1998 green Honda Civic, license AKAC 786. They were observed fleeing the parking lot in haste, and they damaged a park motor vehicle, and there were several witnesses that obtained the license plate. The, uh, both victims were transported to separate hospitals. They both remain there as of to date. The, uh, the bank teller, the 22-year-old female victim, had her bullet removed yesterday. It's my understanding she's still in hospital recovering. The male victim is in hospital with injuries to his left diaphragm, his bowel, his kidney, which was partially removed, his pancreas, which was partly removed, and his spleen, which was completely removed. Uh, as of uh, right now, we're unable to interview the male person. Uh, he had surgery yesterday. He's expected to, uh, both uh, victims are suspected to, uh, are inspected to survive, uh, expected to survive, and uh, he's going to be a while before he comes back to uh, full health. The Yesterday afternoon, around approximately 3 o'clock, I did a media scrum at the bank and released the description of the motor vehicle. Because of that description, the citizens contacted the police on hearing it on the news, and the vehicle was located on Downsview Avenue in the area of Jane and Wilson. That motor vehicle has since been impounded and is going through forensic expert examination. What we want, we're asking for is for the public to review these photographs and video images and to provide any information they can on these possible suspects information to Crime Stoppers or the Toronto Police Service Hold Up Squad or if they believe they know these individuals they can contact 911 if they believe they're armed because these individuals are armed and dangerous. There's no doubt about it. The individual in question with the firearm fired at least two shots during this altercation. He brought a loaded firearm to a bank robbery and obviously he was prepared to use it. With me here today to, uh, to assist in trying to provide, uh, get information to come forward is William Crate from the Canadian Bankers Association and I'd like to turn over the, uh, the podium to him at this time. Good afternoon. On behalf of the Canadian Bankers Association and Canadian banks, I would like to thank Staff Inspector Mike Earle of the Hold Up Squad for inviting me here today. 
Uh, on behalf of the 275,000 bank employees in Canada, I would like to offer our best wishes to a speedy recovery uh, to the TD, TD customer service representative and the customer who were injured during the robbery. You've already heard about the persons of interest that the police are looking for, and Toronto police are working hard to apprehend these individuals, but they need the public's help. There are people out there who will recognize these people and uh, may know where to find them. So to help with the investigation today, on behalf of the Canadian banks, I'm offering a reward for information uh, leading to the arrest and conviction up to $100,000 for any public information. We hope that this reward will lead to information needed to stop these criminals so that people can go about their lives freely and with confidence. Everyone in this room recognizes that bank robberies are a serious issue, not just for law enforcement, but for our communities. But bank robbery is first and foremost, it's a personal crime, it's not an economic crime. There are, it's not the money that we're, we're concerned with in the banking industry at all. There are innocent people involved in these robberies and they are, as you've seen today, our customers and our, and our, our employees. And I think that uh, you've also seen that uh, these events can be very unpredictable. And, uh, and oftentimes we don't, we don't hear anything about robberies except the robbery itself. And today it's a little bit different. We're hearing a lot more information because it did go sideways. When a bank robber walks, walks into a branch, the bank employees have no idea who they're dealing with or what the robber is capable of. And so again, our industry's priority is our customers and our employees. Last year in Canada, there were 591 bank robberies. That is a new low from the year 2000 when there was actually uh, 1,100. So, so uh, we've got something to celebrate and we've got the good work of the police, police services to celebrate just because of that low number and it's going down. We, uh, we commend the police for their, for their work as it delivers a very clear message to potential criminals. If you rob a bank, you will get caught. Ultimately, it, it is a very strong deterrent and goes a long way to ensuring that bank, bank branches remain safe for our customers and, and branch staff. So despite all these efforts, however, we sometimes need your help and that's why I'm making the announcement today of up to $100,000 for information leading to the arrest and conviction of these individuals for this crime. Thank you. What do you mean by up to $100,000? So the decision with regard to the amount uh, is going to be based on the information that's received, and that decision will be entirely made by Toronto Police. So what should a customer do if they witness uh, a robbery? So uh, I, think, I think just as you stated in your question, they should witness a robbery. They should not become engaged. Well, it's too risky. Of the 591 robberies you mentioned last year, how many were armed and then turned by? So... Um, the violence is very rare. Uh, I would say there's probably um, uh, over 20% where there's some kind of weapon seen, and, and a weapon's defined as everything from, from a syringe, is what we see on the West Coast, uh, to a knife or a firearm. Uh, it could be pepper spray, uh, but, uh, but it's rare that they, go, they, go, uh, that they become violent. But there's always that risk, and I mean, and, and the unpredictability around, uh, around bank robbers and uh, is that there's such a high clearance rate, which I'm sure Mike can speak to. So, I mean, if you do rob a bank, ultimately the odds are pretty high that you're going to get caught. Thank you. 